It's been a lot sunnier than it is, but it's a decent day for February. It's 55. Had the windows down before I got the car washed, and so now I don't want to put them down because they'll streak. Um, what is it? It's Monday, and I've been doing house stuff. I got like four large grocery bags of leaves out of the front landscaping. I went out and did some picking. Really, I got probably like 60, 70 percent of them. I didn't go balls deep under the bushes to go and get those. And then we've got some bushes that are really prickly and I have to put gloves on if I'm going to de-leaf those. But just the crap that's blown in since the fall when I kind of did it when it was warm, I got most of that out. So, been productive. I don't know that I've talked about it in the vlog, but I have officially sacrificed a feature on the 330 now due to age and wear. Uh, I will not be repairing it. The sunroof. Fortunately, that was a cool feature that I enjoyed using. And I was really able to say that every single thing on this car worked. And now I can't anymore. So it tilts fine. Sounds normal and, you know, I'll, I'll let it go here. Oop. Oh, don't do that. That looked normal but it tilts okay, but if I go to put it back all the way, about halfway, starting at halfway and then to the rest of the way back, and it will open all the way, it makes horrible crunching sounds, like, um, well, crunching, like marbles in a can. Um, I don't know if there's like broken belts or chains or pieces of something in there that sound atrocious. Um, and then when you go to close it, it'll close about two inches and then stop and open up all the way again. And then it'll close three inches and then stop and then turn around and, and open up all the way again. So if you take both hands, works better with two people, grab it and pull it shut as hard as you can, you will get it shut. I'm not going to keep trying that because eventually that's not going to work. So I talked to the guys at Laric and they were like, yeah, 232,000 miles and needs a cassette. Well, here's the problem with the cassette. Not only are they very expensive parts, anything you do with the sunroof is a huge pain in the ass and involves pulling the headliner out of the car. That doesn't really even scare me. I know how these headliners come down. I remember on Colt's car, we had to pull the headliner on that and it really wasn't that bad. There's a bunch of little fasteners where the grab handles are, the visors, dome lights, ABC pillars, this security thing. Um, and then really it just drops right down. However, the problem starts when you uh, get to the fact that this is an E46 chassis that by design is smaller than the E39 chassis. And when it comes time to take this cassette out and then put a different one in, you can't do that. You have to take out either the front or the rear windshield. Now you're talking several hundred dollars and then I can't do it at home. I can't take a windshield out. So then that turns into having the job done and it would probably be in the neighborhood of $2,000 to do that. And I can't find anybody to give me over $1,000 for this car. Um, so sunroof is now officially dead uh, aside from tilt mode. Speaking of selling this car, I have had absolutely no luck. I've had a couple people interested and then they either A, find out that it's a manual and then they're no longer interested, which is bizarre because I have it listed in the Craigslist ad. Um, the title lists it as a manual and so does the description. So I don't know, and, and then there's pictures of it. So I don't know why people are like so surprised to talk to me on the phone. Oh, it's a five speed? Oh, I don't know how to do that. Read the freaking ad, dude. Uh, and then secondly, I mean, the rust continues to get worse. I got a quote a while ago to have all of it fixed, and I want to say it was $5,000 to have all the rust fixed. So, you know, five times the Kelly Blue Book value of the car to fix the rust. So I, I guess I'm leaning towards keeping it. it. It's, I mean, CarMax offered $378 for it. I've invested that in the last 60 days just with, with maintenance. And the car drives well and it doesn't really need anything. Everything works aside from the sunroof. Mechanically, it's in good shape. It drives straight. It's got good tires, brand new brakes on it, good suspension. I'm not going to sell it for, I would, I really, I, I'll take a loss on it if I sell it for anything less than 10. I have over $10,000. I have over $12,000 in this car. Um, it has absolutely saved the life of the other car. It would have been totaled or damaged beyond realistic repair if I had continued driving it through these past winters. So it's absolutely justifiable. 
If this were my only car, I should have my head examined because it's been a huge loss financially on this thing. Um, so I guess the answer is keep it and just drive it into the ground until the M54 blows up. They don't usually do that, but it is a 230,000 mile motor. So that's where things stand. It's the whole used car phenomenon, but you know when you're in when you're in the market, I've been both prospective buyer and seller of these cars. And when you're in the market to buy one, oh look, they put cones in that hole that screwed up Kenan's wheel. Good. So when you're in the market to buy one of these, to find a car that is this comparatively clean to other ones. I know it has rust and the outside isn't as pretty as it once was, but like the seats aren't gouged up, the seats aren't really dirty, these little doors aren't screwed up, nice M shifter leather boot, fresh plastics here, the parking brake works, xenon lights, all of that works. Um, to find a similar car to that, you're gonna be in eight, 10, 12, and it's still gonna need stuff when you buy it. This car has new plugs, new MAFs, new brakes, um, new oxygen sensors, rear trailing arm bushings have been done, tie rods, alignment, good tires. It just, it doesn't need stuff. I've redone the rear shocks and, uh, and springs. So as a buyer, I would expect to pay eight to $10,000 for this car. Maybe those are, are inflated numbers. It's been years since I've looked at E46s. So maybe six to $8,000. But then as a seller, you go and look around and get values and see what people think it's worth and they're like, oh, $1,500, $2,000. So where are these cars when I'm looking to buy them? And I look at M5s that are like trashed, need $50,000 easily, and they're they're asking um, $15,000 for it. But if I had that car and I were gonna sell it, everybody would say oh, it's worth six or seven. I feel like I get screwed on this stuff. but. I know what it takes to find a car like this, and it's not a $3,000 car. The $3,000 one does not run, does not drive, and needs $20,000 yesterday, and this car doesn't. Looks a lot better clean. It's actually shiny, and that thing got the wheels pretty well this time. You can hear kids screaming off in the background. I remember this time of year when you're like, you know, grade school, fourth, fifth grade, you get the bike out for the first time. It's awesome. Still doesn't look good and needs new mulch. And uh, these are the prickly ones I was talking about. Uh, all the oak leaves get stuffed in there, which sucks. Um, we did have the garage door fixed yesterday, which is nice. They came out and unfortunately found that it needed a lot more than a spring. We hadn't really done anything to that garage door aside from springs on a new motor um, ever. So 31 years. So all of these little wheels over here, many of them were seized. So those are all new wheels and new bearings, obviously, in the wheels. So it's way quieter. And then there's bearings up here where that steel cable wraps around that, th that thing. So there's new bearings there. One in the middle where the springs go. And a new bearing on the other side. New steel cables and wheels over here, too. So it was like half the price of a new door. But it's quieter. No more big groans and creaks and horrible about to break noises. Kevin had some loose trim under his car, so we had to get under it and see why it was loose. Honda's back there. All right, so today I took a day to kind of recover from the painting. My arms and back still hurt like hell. Um, picked out, like I told you, three or four, I think four bags of leaves from the front landscaping. Um, did some house stuff, desk organization, stuff like that. Garage cleanup. Um, kind of came over, not, well, maybe correlating to the uh, pothole incident. He had some of that trim that like covers the fuel filter underneath the car come loose. So we put it up in the air. Um, temporarily affixed that. The plastic components are so dry, they're literally flaking apart in your hands. There's pieces of it. It's right here on my garage floor. It's very brittle and just coming apart. Look at that. So he's gonna have to replace those, but temporarily we drilled a hole in it, got a zip tie, put it up around a bolt so it'll stay on there and protect the car as designed here for a few weeks until we get the new ones put in that uh, hopefully he's ordering tonight. But did that, went with Razvan and Sabrina, they had to do some errands, we picked up a pizza, we came back here, we watched some Netflix, they left a little bit ago, it's approaching 12 o'clock. 
So tomorrow's Tuesday. I do not have a lot going on tomorrow. It's going to rain now for four or five days, which is actually good. We've got to clean these roads up. They're covered in salt. It was over 60 degrees again today. I would have driven the M5 if the roads were not like a pebble beach. So hopefully we get a couple of days of rain to wash those off. And then I would be all for a sunny in 50 and I'll take the car out and go get the emissions check and then get the registration um, in, in, process, in progress. But I don't think that's going to be the case. It's about to get cold again and then snow next week. Um, so that's where we stand there. But uh, I'm going to go to bed and um, talk to you guys on Tuesday night.